Thank you for watching WISD TV and welcome to Mountain View Elementary. Mountain View is Waco ISD's International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program School and it's exhibition time again. We're here to talk to a teacher and a PEMS clerk about exhibition night because the entire school kicks in to make this night a success. First of all, this is Patricia Morgan. She's a fifth grade teacher here at Mountain View. Tell us what exhibition night is all about. Exhibition night, since this is our third year, we really try to take all of the learner profiles and everything that the children have gathered through the whole program and they put it all into one, pick something that they're very interested in and just put it out there for all of the community to see everything that they have done and the hard work that they've put into the program. These are very much involved poster boards, research, slideshows. Tell me uh, all about how the kids come up with their ideas. Well, we always just kind of do um, some brainstorming together, and then they really pick what they feel is necessary for their topic that they chose. Now, we have some that we'll watch in just a moment, but you have some of them that pretend that they're news anchors okay. and do a news report. Some of them do sort of a, a mimic of a game show. They're, they're quite entertaining. They are, and they are fun to watch every day <laughs> and they and it's fun to see them make mistakes but then turn around and say hey this is what I need to do to make things better and they take it and they really just make it turn around and in the end it's perfect. There is a definite theme to uh, the projects. Talk about what that theme is. Well our theme this year is how we organize ourselves and we've kind of focused on human made systems within our community and globally. Um, we know that even we have some that are like Friends for Life which is based here in Waco but they do have programs throughout the United States and globally where they do have um, come in and help the adults um, who have who have need family members. Right. Same thing with Fuzzy Friends. You know, Waco is not the only place that has Fuzzy Friends. You've got several places in Texas, you know, around the world that have no kill shelters. And it's also a definite theme of people helping animals, people helping people, yes. people helping somebody. Yes, and it's it's all about humans coming together and creating these systems that help. Great. I'm going to turn now and talk to Patricia, uh, Janice Collender. Uh, Janice is a PEMS clerk here. Ordinarily, you're not in the classroom, but you're in the classroom here helping with uh, exhibition night. Talk about how, how that is and, and why you've come out of your office where you're generally talking about numbers and attendance and things like, like that, and you're helping kids with their projects. Yes, my job here doesn't really allow me a lot of interaction with the kids but I do value that because I feel like those numbers mean more if you know more about the faces that go with them and the stories that go with them so when Ms. Morgan asked me if I was would help I was more than happy to. So you jumped right in there talk about your classroom experience. Um, my kids worked on a project about wildlife sanctuaries and they were very excited about that topic so that made it so much easier because they were ready to dive in do that research um, put together really interesting ways to share that information with people so um, really it was kind of easy for me because I just gave them a little bit of guidance but they were ready to do that work and ready to show it off what uh, could this experience lead you to become want to become a teacher Possibly. I mean, I, I really do. When I first started here, I was the technology aide. Mm -hmm. So I did love having that hands-on interaction with the kids. So who knows? Possibly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for helping those kids out. I know that they had a great time with you in the classroom, and you had a good time. Yes, absolutely. Totally we will do it again. <laughs> Very good. We're going to turn now and take a look at some of the exhibitions here at Mountain View Elementary. Hi, I'm Ken Shavion. My name is William. And I'm Christian. And our topic is St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. When and where was St. Jude Research Hospital established? It was founded by the late entertainer Danny Thomas. It has existed since 1962 and is located in Memphis, Tennessee. They have recently had their 50 year anniversary. How is St. Jude Children's Research Hospital different than other hospitals? It, it is only a hospital for children, babies through teenagers. It's a research hospital. St. Jude has 7,800 7, active patients each year. 
There are over 17,000 patients receiving care at St. Jude. International partner sites in 14 countries. The St. Jude Children's Research Hospital works with other cancer hospitals. Yes, it works with hospitals that are in Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, Illinois, and Missouri. They actually share their research with other cancer hospitals around the world. In 1962, the survival rate for acute lymphoblastic leukemia was 4%. With research, the survival rate is now 94%. It takes $1.9 million, million dollars a day to operate the hospital. $1.9 million a day? Because it costs so much, St. Jude depends on donations and fundraisers to help pay for the hospital expenses and treatments. We can do fundraisers and donate to St. Jude as well. One way we can donate to St. Jude is by trying to win a dream house. Donate $100 to St. Jude and get a chance to win your very own dream house dream house. There are dream homes in almost every state. Even our school had fundraisers in the past to help St. Jude. We participated in a mathathon. Students accepted donations for every math problem they solved. We could support St. Jude in many ways. For one, another example is you can shop where you see the St. Jude logo signs. Some stores like Target, Domino's, Old Navy, Coca-Cola and k Jewelers have that sign. St. Jude can make families not worry a lot about their kids because they receive excellent treatment and they do not have to worry about their hospital bills. Fundraisers and private donations support 75% of the operation funds. When I went to Viking Hills Elementary School, my principal, Miss North's granddaughter, was diagnosed with cancer called osteosarcoma. We called an interview to Ms. North to find out more about St. Jude. Ms. North's granddaughter was at St. Jude for an entire year. She received 36 weeks of chemotherapy. Her family stayed at the Target house. The families here there stayed at the Ronald McDonald house or the Target house. McDonald's restaurants and Target restaurants support St. Jude and families by providing a place for them to stay while their children are receiving treatment at the hospital. Ms. North said that there are bright colors everywhere and murals on the wall, like this right here. People are nice and kind to the kids who have cancer. The hospital is, is full of wonderful people who did everything they could to make sure the patients and families there were comfortable. It is a happy place even though patients there are very ill. When I researched St. Jude's, I found out that it has decorative wallpaper to make the kids take their minds off of them having cancer. Instead of pushing the patients around in wheelchairs, the staff tows them around in red wagons. Other ways St. Jude, Jude keep kids' minds off of being sick is volunteers come and play games, paint, do arts and crafts, and put on programs for the patients. The volunteers might be from churches, colleges, and other, uh, and other groups. Miss North's granddaughter is cancer-free now and goes back every six months for checkups. Miss North said that once you are a St. Jude patient, then you are a St. Jude patient for life. If you could sum up St. Jude's mission in one word, it would be hope. St. Jude gives families and patients hope. We want to talk about how you can support St. Jude. It's, it's called, called the Game Day Give, Give Back. back. Here's a video to let you know more about it. Well, if you heard about the Game Day Give Back program, what I can say to you is your friends are going to come over to your house to watch the game. They're going to eat your food. They're going to drink your, your drinks. They're going to do all that stuff. Make them give something back, okay? Have your friends come over, have a great time. But when you leave that game, if your team wins or your team loses, no matter what, if you're a part of this program, you're a winner and you help somebody else win. I think there's something to be said about kindness and giving. And the best way to teach anyone anything is by example. And that's what the Game Day Give Back program allows me to do and would allow anybody who participates to do. When you give to St. Jude, you're, you're saving lives. You're saving children's lives. I am so proud to be a part of the St. Jude family. Thank you, really. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and everyone at St. Jude for um, helping.
That's what's important, and that's what the program is all about. You can be the host with the most when you throw a St. Jude game day give back party. By just gathering your friends and family, you help all the families at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Sign up today at stjude.org slash game day. That, that concludes, concludes our, our presentation. presentation. Good morning and welcome to the Mount View News. I'm Kate. And I'm Natalie. We're here today to talk to you about economics. Wait, I'm getting an urgent story from Carl. Friends for life? Let me see. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hang on, Carl. Let me write this down. Got it. Thanks, Carl. Forget economics. Today we'll be talking about Friends for Life. Friends for Life is an organization that cares for people unable to care for themselves and to serve to them as a legal guardian. Friends for Life provides a safe place to live, food to eat, they make sure they receive good medical care and plenty of love and support. Adult Daycare. The Adult Daycare Center provides support to the people's caregiver and to take care of and takes care of them. The adult daycare activities include fun holiday parties, games, bingo, crafts, etc., TV, live musical performances, and physical activities. Friends for Life also provides Friends for Life care managers try to visit their clients' homes weekly to monitor their well-being with health care professionals. Friends for Life offers guardianship services in 81 central Texas counties. Gifts for Grannies. Gifts for Grannies is a fundraiser that donates clothing, accessories, personal care products, items to brighten a room, and miscellaneous gifts. The suggested, the suggested gift items include socks, shampoo and conditioner, blankets, and etc. Volunteer Opportunities To volunteer at French for Life, you must fill out a checklist explaining what you can and can't do, what times you are available, and what you are good and bad at. Some of the volunteer opportunities include mowing the client's yard, minor household repairs, money management in office, or delivering groceries or other items. Who founded Friends for Life? Inez Russell founded Friends for Life in the spring of 1989. Inez realized how lonely and miserable some people were without families, or just how some people couldn't support themselves. Friends for Life made a big impact on that problem. It has now grown to a point where an intergenerational center is now connected to it. We also wanted to tell you Kate and Natalie from Mountain View Elementary are having a gifts for, are having a fundraiser for gifts for grannies and would appreciate some donations from the various suggested gift items on the flyer that will be passed out. The fundraiser will take place between January 27th and February 10th. Thank you, Waco. Have a nice rest of the day. Today, today we're going to talk about Fuzzy Friends. Fuzzy Friends is a nonprofit animal shelter that rescues unwanted animals. Today, our first question is, wait, I'm on the wrong thing. Um, our first question is, how do they care for animals? Fuzzy Friends rescues unwanted animals and cares for them. They give them vaccinations, medications, and grooming if needed. I mean, surgery if needed. Once their bodies are healed, they help them to become happy again. What does Fuzzy Friends do? Fuzzy Friends helps animals in many ways. <coughs> What can we do to help Fuzzy Friends? We can we we can donate food for the for dogs and cats, blankets and heartworms and medication and blankets. We also we also can donate money. How is how how is Fuzzy Friends related to Angel Paws? They both work together to help animals. What are Fuzzy Friends beliefs? Fuzzy Friends believes that the animals need love, respect, and quality life. It is by Kennedy, Daniel, Amarion, Mia, and Luis. What is Fuzzy Friends? Fuzzy Friends is a nonprofit animal shelter. Fuzzy Friends is a shelter that takes in hurt animals and cares for them. They help animals in bad situations like if they are hurt or not cared for. Donations. We are going to donate some things for Fuzzy Friends. We we want to donate 
things for fuzzy friends to help when they was hurt or not care of. The stories of when fuzzy friends, fuzzy friends hurt, they need things for things like food and care. Our questions. Our questions ask about fuzzy friends and the animals, how, how they care for them and what they do for the animals, what they give to them when they are hurt and sick. Thank you. Thank you for coming to see what we have worked on. We are also going to have donations in a donation box to put your donations in. Please bring your donations to Ms. Gish Room, number 25. Thank you. Fuzzy friends. Welcome back to All About Wildlife Sanctuaries. I'm your host, Phoenix Alexander. Today we have three contestants, Jonathan Carl, Emery McDonough, and Gonshawn Smith. Our first question is, what is a wildlife sanctuary? A wildlife sanctuary is an animal-themed restaurant, of course. Correct. Our, our second question is, how does a wildlife sanctuary take care of the animals? They give them stuffed animals so they can cuddle. Cur incorrect. They put the animals with their own kind and give them lots of food and water. Correct. Our third question is, what was the first wildlife sanctuary in the United States? The first wildlife sanctuary was Pelican Island National Refuge, located off the coast of Florida. Correct. Our bonus question is, who was the main founder of the first wildlife sanctuary in the United States? The main founder was Theodore Roosevelt. Correct. Our fourth question is, what do they feed the animals? They feed the animals according to their size, weight, and species. Correct. Our fifth question is, why was a wildlife sanctuary formed? It was formed to protect the animals that are in need. Correct. You won. You may now pick one of these fine bracelets. Sweet. I choose this one. We are selling these bracelets to donate money to Fossil Rim Wildlife Sanctuary. All the money that we donate, all the money that we gain will be donated to Fossil Rim. And, and we have some fun facts here. Wildlife sanctuaries help animals that are endangered, threatened, or extinct in the wild. You can always give money or volunteer to help out your local wildlife sanctuary. Animals are placed in their own natural habitat. And that concludes our presentation. Very impressive exhibitions by the students here at Mountain View. I'm with Melissa Pritchard. She's the principal here. you got to be proud because uh, these are fifth graders who are going to be moving on next year. They are, and we're going to miss them greatly. Um, this is our third year to do exhibition. I think it's probably one of the best years yet. Of course, every year we say that. But um, as far as easier, it doesn't get easier necessarily for our teachers, for our students. But we know the routine. We know what's expected of us. So it does get a little bit easier in that sense of the procedure. Procedures. But each year is a new year with a new group of kids, so we have new challenges each and every year. So this one has, as well, has had its challenges, but we're very proud of our kids. I think they've just done a great job. Exhibition is also very important because it teaches these young people how to do research that they're going to be doing in seventh grade and eighth grade and on through high school. It does, and it also brings in that technology piece. It brings in that presentation piece. So it's really well-rounded. And they take those transdisciplinary skills that they've learned throughout their IB program, and they apply it to their final project. So if you will, in a sense, this is their final, um, final, pro pro final project for their elementary uh, grade level. There you go. Uh, Janice Collender, a PEAMS clerk, goes into the classroom. So you, uh, all hands on deck for this. Every hands, all hands are on deck. We have um, instructional aides working, our APs working, counselors are working. Um, every teacher is involved some way. I think nearly every uh, staff or paraprofessional participated in some way or another with this program tonight. 
Well, I know these students really enjoyed uh, presenting for our cameras, but they have a live audience also that they have to present to. They will, and they um, will do that tonight. Um, and so they'll present. They're, we're going to have a little bit of a different format this, uh, this evening. We're going to have two different times. So we're hoping that's a little less crowded so that our parents can see more of their children, can hear better. And we're having it in our fifth grade building. We're moving it back down to the fifth grade building, but there will be less students presenting at one time. So we're hoping that makes a difference. Each year we take those parent comments that are so important mm -hmm. and try to make the program even better. Well, hopefully we got a little butterflies out of their st stomach, getting them used to presenting on camera. I know some of the students were a little bit nervous, but yes. but uh, hopefully they'll do well tonight in front of a live audience, in front of those parents. This was a great dress rehearsal. <laughs> and our younger students are actually getting to also see some of these presentations. Throughout the day today, they'll be going to their grade level and presenting these as well for them. So they're actually getting to see what they can look forward to next year and in the years to come. Very good. Once again, I'm with Melissa Pritchard here at Mountain View Elementary, and uh, she's been practicing to be on TV, so we're going to let her take us out of here. Go ahead, Melissa. We want to make sure you want to stay tuned and watch more great WIS-TV.